Hi everyone, this is Lawrence and welcome to my channel. For this video, we will be discussing the secant methods, another one of the numerical methods. So let's start. What is the secant method? So I'll just discuss a brief background of this method. For example, you're given here a certain function and you're asked to solve for the root of a nonlinear function. So definitely the root here, as you see, is this point. So how does secant method work? First, you have to assume two points. Let's just say point x sub 0 and then point x sub 1, which is here. When you project those two points on the curve, x sub 0 would give you fx sub 0, and then x sub 1 would give you fx sub 1. And then what you do is that those two points on the graph you connect them by a secant line. That secant line then touches or crosses the x-axis at this point. That point where it crosses is now what you call x sub 2. And then again, x sub 2, you just project it on the curve. And then the new point, and then the x sub 1, so the new point x sub 2, and uh, fx sub 2, sorry, and then fx sub 1, you connect them again by another line. And then this line would then again cross or touch the x-axis, giving you an x sub 3. So when you project that, it gives you fx sub 3 and so on until you come close and close enough to the actual root. The main difference of this one with the bisection method and the method of successive substitution is that the secant method is not a bracketing method. So there's no assurance that you will converge to a, to a certain root or a certain value. So let's go to the algorithm. First, the steps are assume x sub 0 and x sub 1, or sometimes the teacher or the professor might give x sub 0 and x sub 1. So what you do is test if it passes the condition. So what's the condition? So if f x sub 0 is less than f x sub 1, so f, the y value for this one is less than the y value of this one, so the absolute value, then swap x sub 0 and x sub 1. Why? This is to ensure that the absolute value of the function does not increase and so that it converges easier. So again, you don't need to swap when fx sub 0 is greater than x, x sub 1. But if it's in this form, you have to swap x sub 0 and x sub 1. And then the next step is that you need to solve for x sub 2. Um, a lot of the literature, you'll be able to see uh, a variation of this one. x sub i plus 1, x sub i, fx sub i. But then for easier uh, for easier understanding, what I used was 2, 1, and 0. Meaning 2 is the one after, and then sub 0 is the one before. So basically, um, x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1 minus the function x uh, function f x sub 1 multiplied by the difference between x sub 1 and x sub 0 all over f x sub 1 minus f x sub 0. And then sometimes you can see this to be in some books to be x sub 0 minus x sub 1. But then the bottom has to also be f x sub 0 minus f x sub 1. So for our purposes, let's just use this. And then step number four, the next iterate, we set the x sub 0, the new x sub 0, to be the old, old x sub 1. And then the new x sub 1 to be x sub 2. And then solve for the new x sub 2. And then we continue until the absolute value of fx sub 2 is less than or equal to the error indicated. So I know it's a bit too much. Let's go to the example for you to be able to understand easier. Okay, in this case, I'm asking you to solve for the root of this function. 
Um, please take note that if, for example, you're given a function x to the third plus x squared minus 3x equals 3, change it in the form wherein uh, the whole function is equal to 0, such as this example. So you're asked to solve for the root of this cubic function, and then you're asked to solve until 0 0.0001, so less than or equal to this. So what we do first is, Assume values for x sub 0 and x sub 1. In this case, x sub 0 is 1 and x sub 1 is 2. So let's try to answer this. Is the absolute value of f of 1 less than f of 2? So 1 and 2. So let's see. f x sub 0, which is actually your f sub 1, the value is negative 4. And then f x sub 1, which is your f of 2, the value is 3. So, let's look at this. This one is negative 4, and this one is 3. So, since um, the value of the first uh, assumption, fx sub 0, is greater than the second, there's no need to swap. Okay? And then, we solve already for your x sub 2, following this formula below. So going to the example here, what x sub 0 is 1 and x sub 1 is 2. So we place that in the column, in the cell here, x sub 0 and then x sub 1. And then take note again that since the function here gives us negative 4 and then the absolute value of that is greater than the function, the result here, there's no need to swap x sub 0 and x sub 1. And then we basically just follow this formula to obtain x sub 2. So this is your x sub 2 and then solve for f x sub 2 by plugging the values in the given uh, cubic function here. So the x sub 1 in the zeroth iteration or some people call it the first iteration basically just put it here. So diagonally, it goes to the x sub 0. And then x sub 2, the old x sub 2, will be the new x sub 1. And then solve for another x sub 2. And then continue on until you reach the certain level of error. So for this case, you were asked to solve for, or basically on the fifth decimal place. So at the fourth iteration, your final answer is 1.732051 for x sub 2 and then it has an error of 1.42 times 10 to the negative 6. So let's, let's go to the Excel file. So how do we do that? Basically, you're given this function. Uh, let's just try to program it. So equals this cube plus this square minus 3 times this column minus 3 and then whatever that is just drag that let's just say to 6 iteration and then this one as well <clears throat> oh just copy this sorry <clears throat> is this correct yeah it's correct so how do we solve for x sub 2? x sub 2, we basically follow this formula for the secant. So it is equal to x1 minus f of x1 multiplied by x1 minus x0 all over fx1 minus fx0. So this is the value. So you have to remember that the new x0 at the first iteration will be the x1 of the previous iteration. And then the new x1 of the new iteration will be the x2 of the previous. Okay, so let's just drag this. Let's drag this. <clears throat> so earlier the answer was 1.732050808. See, on the fourth line here, you'd be able to already see this is the fourth iteration. 
um, that um, it has reached a certain uh, answer close to this one. And then you can see that the error here is times 10 to the negative 6, the absolute value of this one. Now, what will happen again earlier if I say um, you b exchanged this one? So, if say this is the one that's 2 and then this is the one that's 1. In order to reach the certain uh, level of error, it has to be the next iterate. So, that means it takes a bit longer to converge to that certain value. That's why uh, here, f x sub 0 is less than the absolute value of x, uh, uh, f x sub 1. So that means you have to swap the values. So, in, so this one would give us the correct answer on the fourth iterate. So basically, that's it here. Thank you very much for watching. And by the way, just a reminder, if in case um, you're given transcendental functions, the secant method still works for transcendental functions. It also works for that. Just so happen that the values that you have to insert are in radian measure. So make sure that your calculators or uh, whatever you use to for programming is in radian mode. So again, thank you very much. That's the end of this video.